Okay, here we go. All right, so I chose this photo for our Alberto Silveso practice, and I duplicated the background copy of the photo just in case I want the original later. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and cut the person out of their background. Like I said, I want to be able to, I'll keep the background later, but I want to be able to put a middle ground of vector paths and maybe like paintbrush splatters, just fun stuff to create some movement and texture later. All right, to do that, I'm going to go to the Quick Select tool. And I'm going to reduce my brush size real small so that I have some control and do my best to select just the portrait. Okay, some reminders about the quick select tool. If you go outside, if you paint outside your selection by accident, you can hold Alt on your keyboard or Option and subtract from the selection. Also, zooming in really helps um, Photoshop be more precise. And I've got a teeny tiny brush going on, so it's also more precise. But it's not going to be perfect, which is why I'm going to use Refine Edge in a moment. Okay, had a lot of pattern on the shirt. Wanted to make sure I got that all selected. All right, so selecting people or animals can be, you know, kind of hard, especially with hair and fur. And in this case, even her eyelashes are sort of extending off the silhouette of the face. And I'm not getting all the eyelashes. So what I'm going to do is use what's called Refine Edge in a moment so that Photoshop can kind of feather out my edges and maybe get a little bit of these you know wispy eyelashes or hair without making it look too chunky because that's pretty chunky right there all right when you've got a pretty good selection go back to that quick select tool and you want your sub menu for the quick select and we're going to click on the button select and mask all right, and when we go to Select and Mask, we're going to be in Quick Mask mode. And over here on our Properties, we're going to adjust some things. All right, so we're looking for the edges, and we're trying to maybe smooth out or even possibly feather the edges. So that's why I'm going to maybe increase the smooth. You can see, you know, how it changes. 
Maybe increase the feather a little bit and soften the edge. I'm going to leave the contrast alone. All right, and then where it says output settings, output two, right now it says selection. I don't want that. I want new layer with layer mask. All right, so on output two where it says selection, I drop that down. I'm going to do new layer with layer mask. Okay, and now it's going to take that selection, it's going to feather my edge, and it's going to put it in a new layer with the background masked. All right, see that? So now the background is masked. It's not, you know, erased. Okay, and I did maybe a little, I can tell right away that maybe my feather was a little bit too much because I can see a little red halo around the white of the shirt. So I might go back and make my feather a little, um, uh, Reduce the pixels of the feather next time. Okay, from here, I'm ready to start doing my vector shapes. All right, so I'm going to go get the pen tool. And then up here on the submenu for the pen tool, I'm going to use shape. So we were using path to do our lines, our paths. And today we're going to be making shapes. We're making vector shapes. So make sure that when you choose the pen tool, you go to your submenu and you choose shape. All right, from here you can change your fill color. Um, but technically, I'm going to be making what's called clipping masks, if you remember clipping masks. So really, the shape color doesn't really matter. All right, and I'll show you. Here we go. So I've got shape selected. No stroke, none on the stroke. All right, and you could use, you know, your freeform pen tool if you want. I just like using the regular pen tool. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and make my first shape. Just kind of a organic kind of blob around the eye. Notice that I'm clicking and dragging to create direction handles and smooth points. I'm tracing all the way back to my original anchor point. I'm going to see a little circle next to my cursor that tells me I'm closing the path. So remember, you want to trace all the way around. You want to close the path. That makes it a defined shape that Photoshop understands. You've made it a defined shape. They're not going to you know, if you don't close the path, then Photoshop is going to try to automatically fill it for you, and you're going to have some weird hard edges and straight lines. So make sure you always close the path. All right, now let's say you've decided you want this to be smoother. Let's go get that white arrow underneath the pen tool. It's called the direct selection tool, and we saw how you can edit paths with the white arrow. So, you know, you can take your time and, you know, your shapes don't have to be perfect at first. You can go get that white direct, uh, direct select arrow and you can edit your paths. You can smooth them out, change their shape, make them look more sophisticated and advanced. Okay, now notice right here in the layers palette when I made my new shape, it's a vector shape, so it's creating a brand new layer for it. And I like to name my layers so that I stay organized. So I'm going to go ahead and just name that left eye. All right, now that I've got my first shape, what I'm going to do is I am going to add a drop shadow to it. So I'm still on that shape layer, and I'm going to go to Image Adjustments. Oh, sorry, I need to uh, rasterize it. Notice right now it's a vector shape, and I've got that little box right here on the thumbnail telling me that it's paths and anchor points. So in order to add a layer style to this vector shape, I need to rasterize it. So I'm going to go to the layer, and I'm going to right-click and rasterize the layer. 
All right, when you rasterize a vector shape, you turn it into pixels. All right, now notice it's been rasterized and that little uh, symbol with the paths and anchor points are gone. Okay, I can no longer edit this shape as far as the path goes. All right, but what I can do now is add some of my layer styles. So I'm going to go to layer, layer style, drop shadow. And I'm going to give this shape a drop shadow. Now, um, you can give it a realistic drop shadow. Think about where your light source is coming from and give it a drop shadow where opposite the light source. Or it can be, you know, not realistic if you want. I'm going to increase the distance and the spread as well as the size so that I can see more of it. Right now, I've got my blend mode on normal because I really want to see the shadow. And I'm increasing the opacity up to 100 because, once again, I want to see it. Okay, and right now it's, you know, pretty subtle. If you want to, you know, add some interest to it, maybe you want your drop shadow to be a different color. Maybe you want it to be um, at a different angle. Like I said, it can be going, you know, with the light source or against the light source. All right, and I kind of really want mine to stick way off. So I'm going to go ahead and increase the distance so that it shows up more over there. All right, and now that I can see it, I'm just going to go ahead and reduce the opacity just a little bit and soften it up. All right, so I've got my drop shadow. Next step is to create a clipping mask. So what I'm going to do is duplicate the photograph. We're going to be doing this a lot. All right. We're going to make a vector shape, add the layer styles, duplicate the photo and create a clipping mask. All right. So I've got my duplicated photo right here. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate it again. And I'm going to drag and drop it to the top of my layers palette so that it's now on top of that vector shape. And I'm going to create a clipping mask. I'm just going to right click on the layer and create clipping mask. Okay, now notice what happened. I clipped the duplicated photograph into the vector shape. And the drop shadow is there on the vector shape. So it looks like the photograph is sort of cut away and floating above itself. All right, let's do that again. I did everything in the layers palette. Let's say, you know, you'd rather use the menu. I can go up to layer, create clipping mask. All right, now notice, you know when it is clipped because it's got that little drop down arrow next to the photograph. All right, so right now it's still, you know, the photograph, it's natural color. Um, and what I could do from here is play around with color, with color overlays. All right, so I could add an adjustment layer. How about... Hmm, let's see, let's do a hue saturation adjustment layer and see if we like that. Nope, because it's not clipped. Okay, so what I could do is create a clipping mask on the adjustment layer and now it's only adjusting the photograph itself. Okay, that's one way to do it. I'm going to do that again. All right, so what I did was I went down to the bottom of my layers palette, clicked on the half black, half white circle for new adjustment layer, chose hue saturation. You could also do, by the way, solid color if you want it to be more vibrant. Let's go ahead and do that. We'll do solid color. You can go ahead and choose a color. I'm going to create a clipping mask on that adjustment layer so that it only overlays the layer right below it. Okay? So now I'm back to having that solid color. And at this point, I could reduce 
the opacity of the layer. All right, so notice if you do an adjustment layer solid color, it's, it's more about the color feeling like you've got a whole layer of paint on top of the photo. All right, let's take a look again at when I did just the adjustment layer with hue saturation. Okay, once again, it's been clipped. It's only clipped onto the photograph right below it. And I'm just going to adjust the color using the hue saturation. Now, see the difference? It's much more realistic. All right, so I like that a little bit better. But up to you if you'd like it to just feel like it's more opaque paint on top of your image. Okay, so from here, I'm just going to keep going and repeat those steps a lot. <laughs> so I'll go back to the pen tool, double check you have shape. Once again, you've got fill only, no stroke, doesn't matter. Once again, doesn't really matter what color it is because you're going to put a photograph on top of it. All right, and I'll have some fun creating some more shapes over the face. Now, remember, your goal here is to create interesting shapes that are layering, overlapping, creating different sizes. Um, and helping to create dimension. Maybe some of them are going to be organic. Maybe some of them are going to be geometric. All right, I'm going to call that one right eye. Next, I'm going to rasterize the shape. Right click, rasterize the layer. All right, now I just want the same drop shadow on every shape. And I'm going to do a shortcut here. I'm going to just copy and paste my drop shadow to my next shape layer. So I'm going to go over here to the FX for my drop shadow on the previous layer. I'm going to hold Alt on the keyboard, click and hold on the FX, drag and drop it up to my new shape layer. So that's my little shortcut to copy and paste the layer effects. All right, next I need to duplicate the background photo again. All right, I'm going to drag and drop it up on top of my new shape layer. It's going to look like all of thing, things got canceled out. I'm going to create a clipping mask on that top photograph. Right click, create clipping mask. Okay, and there it is. Now I could leave it, you know, some of them can just have color and some of them don't have to have color if you like. Or you can still add more color to each one. So I'll add my adjustment layer, brightness, contrast. I once again need to clip that adjustment layer into the layer right below it. And then I'll go ahead. Oh, I didn't want brightness, contrast. Sorry, I wanted hue, saturation. Okay. And think about having a color scheme. Maybe I'm going to do warms. All right, the other thing you could play around with is the placement of the photo. You know, right now I've just been keeping the photo exactly as is so the person still looks realistic. But maybe you want to play around with that. I'm going to get the Move tool. I'm on my duplicated photocopy, and I'm going to shift the eye. All right, so maybe you want to play around with shifting the features around, making it more abstract, playing around with proportions. Okay, from here, I'm going to continue, if I'm going to complete this artwork, I'm going to go ahead and continue that same process. Make a vector shape, copy and paste the drop shadow, duplicate the photo, create a clipping mask, possibly add a hue saturation adjustment layer and a clipping mask. Okay, 
So why don't you spend the rest of today going ahead and focusing on those vector shapes with drop shadows and color overlays. Next class, we will pick up with adding more details like brushes and vector paths.